The village was lost amidst the numerous forests of Russia, far away from the hustle and bustle of city civilization. It often happens that the further a settlement is from civilization, the harder it is to maintain law and order there. In this place, the local fat cats, earning their wealth through dishonest means, hold power. Only a few brave individuals are capable of resisting their lawlessness. Tyan Maximovich spent his whole life working as a gamekeeper in such a place, and he loved his job. He cherished the taiga, and he was glad that fate hadn't led him to the big cities but instead tied his life to the wild nature. Year after year, he protected his familiar territory, maintained order, and considered himself a part of the taiga region. These lands were his roots, the place where he got married, and where his son was born. He connected himself with these places until the end of his days. His son grew up, joined the army, and decided to stay in the areas where he had served. His mother and father eagerly awaited his every return home, trying to convince him to stay in their homeland. But their son was constantly drawn elsewhere. Eventually, he settled down, got married, and had a daughter. Now, the grandparents always awaited their son's visits with his wife and little girl. However, after two years, their daughter-in-law appeared on their doorstep with a suitcase and their granddaughter in her arms. It was then that the parents learned the terrible fate of their son. He had gotten involved in some scheme with business people and had disappeared. It had been a couple of months since they last heard from him, and she had no idea where he was or where to look for him. He once said that if something like this happens, go to my parents' village, wait for me there, or wait for a message from me, and he gave her the address of the old couple. Now she is here, I will wait for him as long as it takes, even a lifetime, the girl cried and lamented. I love him more than life itself. So Nastia settled with her daughter near the old couple. On one hand, there was grief that their son was missing, but on the other hand, now their granddaughter lived nearby, and they could see her grow every day. However, tragedy did not spare their home either. After some time, Nastia finally received a message, but not from her husband. It was a message about him, saying that he was no longer in this world, and horrifying photos were attached as evidence. The body, they said, was not to be found. The old couple failed to keep track of their daughter-in-law, and after receiving the letter, early in the morning, Nastia took a rope and hanged herself in the shed. Only Tyan, her husband, and the little Xyusha remained, and Xyusha was the one who bore their sorrow. Now, returning from the forest, Tyan knew that in his warm and cozy home, his granddaughter, his treasure, awaited him. Tyan adored her, and Xyusha hardly remembered her mother, as her grandfather raised her together with his wife, Maria. However, Maria did not live long. The shocks of recent years had greatly undermined her health. Finally, Xyusha grew up and turned into a real bride. It's just a pity that her parents and grandmother did not live to see this moment. In a week, Tyan planned to go to the entrance of the forest territory. He kept going deeper into the taiga, making notes on the map, recording data about fallen trees, and then he heard a whimpering sound, a wolf cub. Oh, they're really close, the old man said aloud, but why are they making noise? Other predators will hear them. He cautiously pushed aside the branches, and he was stunned. Under the roots of a tree, there lay a dead she-wolf, and near her, two wolf cubs sat. One was nuzzling its wet nose against its mother, and the other was sq, sq squealing loudly. Maximik furrowed his brow, then took off his backpack and approached the cubs. They fell silent and huddled against their mother. When the old man reached out his hand to one of them, the cub tried to bite him, showing its courage. Well done, the old man smiled. Good instincts. So, you're the leader of this pack. The old man picked up the cubs and put them in his backpack. He returned home earlier than usual this time. Grandpa, Xenia exclaimed, why are you back so early? What do you have for me? Tyan said, 
taking off his backpack. Two pairs of gleaming eyes stared at the girl. Grandpa, where did you get wolf pups? They're not pups, they're the future wolves, Xiusha exclaimed in surprise. She was used to her grandfather constantly nursing and caring for injured animals, but wolves in their house were a first, and there were two of them. Now the granddaughter spent whole days with the wolf cubs. She fed them and watched over them. One of them had a darker coat, he was the future wolf. She named him North too. The little wolf was a playful one in the group. The cubs would grow up to a certain age, and then they would be placed in their familiar taiga environment, under the watchful eye of the gamekeeper, Tikhan. A year had passed since then, and everything seemed to be going well. The only thing that bothered Grandfather Tikhan was that a local poacher named Yakov had set his sights on his beautiful granddaughter. Tikhan couldn't stand the audacity of this man, but he had been unable to catch him red-handed. Yakov had developed a habit of coming to the barn when Grandfather went into the taiga on his rounds. The girl didn't know how to fend off this bold suitor. Tikhan suggested, come with me to the taiga. Stay at the homestead. Maybe this scoundrel will back off when he realizes his schemes are futile. The granddaughter agreed, and Xenia moved to the homestead for the summer to help her grandfather with work and household chores. But it wasn't easy to shake off Yakov, especially since the forest was like a second home to him. He was determined to have his way with the beauty he had become infatuated with. Yakov lay in wait for Tikhan to venture deeper into the taiga, and he burst into the cabin. Enough resisting, my little innocent, he said unabashedly. He grabbed Xenia and pinned her against the wall. He began tearing at her clothes, and she realized that he wouldn't hold back this time. She screamed loudly, although she knew there was no one to come to her rescue. But she was mistaken. North and Yuga burst through the open door of the cabin and attacked the assailant, tearing at him with all their might, reaching every part they could. Yakov was saved only by his sturdy hunting gear, otherwise, the predators would have torn him to pieces. Thank God, the cries of the granddaughter reached grandfather's ears, and he came to her aid, restraining the scoundrel at gunpoint. Accompanied by the wolves, they took Yakov to the village, where the local police officer took him into custody. Soon after the trial, the assailant was sentenced to a lengthy punishment under a very severe article. The little girl and her family took care of a litter of wolf pups and never expected this to happen just a few months later. Elsa's parents are very loving to her, they also own a farm and a large piece of land. They kept a goat and many chickens near the barn, and in the fields further afield they kept dozens of sheep. There was only one thing missing from the couple, but after several years of trying, they finally had beautiful baby Elsa. Elsa had some troubles in the first few years of her life as mom and dad adjusted to their new lifestyle. Working on a farm means early mornings and long hours. This posed a challenge for the couple as Elsa was a toddler and needed a lot of attention. She is very caring and funny, but she has a hard time learning to talk and can become picky if things are not done consistently. For example, she always brushes her teeth after breakfast. They were a little late for the barn and fields one morning, so dad packed a breakfast for her to eat outside, and then he tried to get her to brush her teeth before they left the house. But this caused a huge crash. When Elsa was about three years old, her mother took her to see a doctor for a checkup. She wants to make sure Elsa can learn to talk so she can start school next year. If she's diagnosed as nonverbal, then at least mom and dad can start working on other forms of communication, like sign language. The doctor assured her that Elsa would eventually learn to talk, she just had to go at her own pace. Still, they ran some tests, and after months of trial and error, they finally officially diagnosed Elsa with autism. The whole family was thrilled with the diagnosis. In some ways, parents worry that their daughters will struggle in life and relationships. But, on the other hand, they take comfort in having a better understanding of their child's needs. Elsa was perfect in her parents' eyes, 
and they loved her more than anything in the world. No matter what the world labels her, with the help and resources provided by doctors, mom and dad have changed their lives to better accommodate Elsa. The biggest shift they had to make was sticking to a consistent schedule. Elsa does better when her life is organized the way she expects it to be, and her life becomes more stable as the routine goes on. Given the amount of time and work required to run a farm, moms and dads have to get creative in their day-to-day -day routines. Dad has to come home at lunchtime every day so he can pick up Elsa and head out into the fields. The little girl enjoyed an afternoon outdoors, and the sheep seemed to like her. Dad was very surprised to see the way Elsa got along with the animals. It's as if there is a direct kinship between his daughter and any animal she meets. There is something in her nature that communicates care and openness to animals. The connections she made superseded words and the need for much communication. This girl is a miracle. Mom and Dad noticed that Elsa's quality of life improved a lot after she started spending more time with the animals. Clearly, she has talent, and they choose to cultivate it. Soon, Elsa's circle of animal friends expands to include collies, goats, and all the chickens. She is passionate about spending time with animals and finds it soothing. As she got a little older, Mom and Dad started delegating some of the easier farm work to her. She is good at feeding the animals and really enjoys the consistency of doing these chores at the same time every day. Elsa is talkative at this point and does well in school. Mom and Dad feel very proud. That summer, they chose to show Elsa how to fish. There is a nice creek on the edge of the property they frequent. The current is so strong that parents seldom swim in it, and Elsa has never tried to swim there because of her small size. However, they can stand on shore and catch fish with their nets, so fishing has become a new family hobby. A few times a week, Elsa goes fishing in the stream with her parents. It was a fair trek to get there, and they had to cross fields and then through forests to reach the stream. That summer, Elsa traveled back and forth across the land and found that there were a lot of wild animals living there. Besides farm animals, there are many other plants and animals on this land. One magical morning, Elsa and her father are walking home through the forest after fishing at the stream. They walked quietly when the wind brought a faint cry, which was their norm. Both of them were stunned. Did they really just hear it? After a while, they heard voices again. Then the cries began to overlap. Elsa and her father looked at each other without speaking, but decided to go to the sound to investigate. Dad saw it first. He stretched out his arms sideways calmly, signaling Elsa not to walk anymore. She stood her ground and looked up and down the woods, looking for something that caught her father's attention. She lowered her head, unable to believe her eyes. Four puppies snuggled up between the roots of a tree, cooing. They are so small that they don't seem to be able to fully open their eyes yet. Elsa asked her dad if those were wild dogs, and he giggled. In a sense, he replied. He quietly explains to Elsa that the puppies are not actually dogs, but their ancestors, wolves. However, he told her that he had never seen anything like it. Where is the puppy's mother? They're probably only a few days old, so by the laws of nature, she should be around. Elsa stays put and takes care of the cubs while dad goes looking for mom. He realized that he hadn't gone far before he encountered a she-wolf. She was dead, and her hind legs were covered in blood. Labor may be too much for her. Dad put some flowers near her head and said thank you. He returned to his daughter and gasped when he saw her. Elsa sat down beside the wolves, leaning her back against a tree trunk. All four puppies lay neatly on her lap. They stopped crying. The three seemed to be asleep, and Elsa gently stroked the other. These wolves lost their mother, but fate gave them a new one. So, Dad decided that they would not separate. He helped his daughter with the puppy all the way home. 
Elsa has set up a barn just for wolf cubs, and her parents have fed her some fresh goat milk. In this way, this little family had four wolves. They love Elsa so much that they follow her wherever she goes. Everyone is lucky that these wolves are around. It was unbelievable what they did one rainy day at the stream a few months later. Elsa is fishing with her dad. He dipped one foot into the water to reach the net across the stream, far from shore. Elsa tries to help him set the net, but the rain makes the rock she's standing on very slippery. Before she knew it, she had fallen into the water. Dad watched her flash by, and the current carried her downstream. He crawled back to shore and started chasing his daughter. He slipped and scraped badly on the edge of a rock. Panic gripped him until he looked up to see all four of their wolves rushing in front of Elsa. Wasting no time, they dived into the water, forming a dike not far in front of her. The water took her into their arms and they drove her back to the shore. Luckily Dad was there and pulled her to the ground where they were both lying panting. Dad could only think of one thing. He was incorrect before. Fate did not allow Elsa to save those wolf cubs. Instead, fate sent the cub to her rescue. 